folks, it's here. Fourth Axis Fusion 360 Tool Pass. I am so excited. I know today's Fusion Friday was actually uh, a separate video, but this just came out. It's Thursday. I couldn't help but record a quick video. I want to show people how we're doing this, and I want to see we don't, if someone can test the code for me on their, on their fourth because I don't have the chance to do it right now. So let's walk through how to do this. It is so easy. We'll do the code first, and I'll walk, rewind and go back to the setup. 2D adaptive clearing. But wait, that's not fourth axis. Hold on, everybody. Calm down. Select a tool. Tool 17, which is just an eighth inch end mill. Geometry. Before I pick my pocket, take a look. Wrap tool path. I'm going to check that box. What's the cylinder? Click right here. Offset none. Gives me the radius. That's fine. Now go back. I think... I want to pick the bottom uh, ring. There's actually a lengthy, detailed conversation, or not argument, but debatable topic you can get about, about the control point of the tool and what's the correct geometry and so forth and normal to blah, blah, blah. But this should work for most people. Passes. Let's just leave it as is. I'll turn off stock to leave. Click OK. Oh, my God. OK, so now what's going on here? Why is it why we have a bajillion height lead in? So edit. Heights, something kind of weird going on with why it's got such a tall lead out. So let's change our top height to selection. And I'll click this and retract height. Let's do it from top height. And I'll just say 0.1. And then clearance height from retract height of 0.1 as well. Let's see if that gives us an error or works. Amazing. Folks, look. This is so cool. Doing a linking, a ramp in, move, lead in. It's moving the tool right now and not the part. I think, I hope there's a way you can change that. I'm not sure. I, I don't know how yet, but this is still so cool. Um, yeah, so, but we do have this A-axis post. I th right now, I think it's only meant for left-hand side mounted fourth axis. So there's more work that needs to come. There's also one, if I go to the Tormach website for post processors that redirects here, see this banner ad? Kind of click, not banner ad, but you click it, it redirects to an Autodesk website, and there's this new post. I think it's actually the first one, generic Tormach, that now says three axis and four axis milling with Smart Cool. So it's pretty darn new. Uh, we don't have our four set up. We're in the middle of a training class, and then I'm getting ready to go to Las Vegas. I don't have time to test this. Can someone tell us if this works? Because here's what's amazing we've got three more of these to do. Right click, add a new pattern. What's my pattern type? Circular. Axis. Click this ring. Number of them, three. Oh my gosh. Look at this, folks. You now have patterned three of these toolpaths around this. Uh, this was our, a quick little setup part that we had made. I want to finish it. We want to do a full detailed video on fourth axis stuff. Uh, we'll show how we actually set it up and machine it. I cannot wait, folks. This is so cool. Um, a little bit more on this part and the setup. Let's just start from scratch. New setup. I will do stock, relative size cylinder. Let's do fixed size cylinder. Actually, you know what? It was from solid. That's right. I did from solid because I modeled my stock here. In fact, it's worth taking a look at that really quick over in the CAD. So here's our part that you can see. But the stock we're going to use assumes that it already has this relief cut inside of it um, for these fins, just for the sake of this example. Cam. Setup, stock will be from a solid. And I'm going to expand my part right here. I'm going to expand the stock. I don't even need to turn the light bulb on, expand the body. I know that that was my stock. If you can see the transparent blue through there. And then on setup, uh, normally I would have my fourth axis mounted such that this is the X axis. So the way to switch that go from model orientation to select Z axis and X axis. Z axis, I will pick, um, I wanna pick that. So let's turn my part off, the visibility light bulb right here on the top left of your screen. That's gonna let me pick the same Z axis just to confirm it so I have a value listed there. And then my X, I'm actually gonna pick the Y right now and look. Now it flipped it, and I would probably put it on the leading edge of my stock 
So I'm going to pick a stock box point right here. So that's got the top center right edge of my stock as my XYZ zero. Click OK. I've now got a new setup. You could come back here again and go ahead and do your uh, 2D adaptive, which is just amazing. folks. I'm so excited. Uh, thank you to the Fusion 360 team. They actually got this out ahead of what I thought they were going to do it on. I'm sure there's going to be some quirks and, and things that they'll pick up and improve on, but there's so much good stuff coming in the software. Uh, it, it, you know, Autodesk's logo is the future of making things, and I'm really happy that they're helping us do that. Cannot wait to get some chips made. Let me know, folks, if this post uh, works. I will share the file, uh, this CAD file and the Post processor on Patreon, link in the video description. Take care. See you next Friday.